Ja, schönen guten Abend. Ich möchte Sie ganz herzlich begrüßen zu unserer 25. Ausgabe des Afrika Live Festivals. Ich freue mich, dass wir heute Abend einen Gast hier haben, Jack Sarrazin, den ich hier ganz herzlich begrüßen möchte. Ähm, Jack ist in, ähm, in der Schweiz geboren. Er hat dann in unterschiedlichen Bereichen gearbeitet, unter anderem auch sich ähm, humanitär engagiert in, Lat in Afrika und Lateinamerika. Anfang der 90er Jahre hat er dann eine Produktionsfirma gegründet, ähm, Fair Bleu, und hat ähm, kurze ähm, Dokum Dokumentar- und ähm, äh, kurze Filme gedreht. Ähm, 99 waren das die beiden Filme Seul Autour du Monde und ähm, Euro European DN. Ähm, bekannt geworden ist oder auch vielleicht auch hier bei uns und bei dem Publikum hier bekannt geworden ist er mit zwei äh, Musikdokumentationen. Das erste war The Chanteré pour toi aus dem Jahre 2002, ähm, der den ähm, Star des afrikanischen Blues Bubakar Karkar Traoré aus Mali porträtiert. Der Film lief damals hier auch im Festival. Ähm, der zweite Film ist On the Rumba River von 2007 mit den kongolesischen Musiklegende ähm, Papa Wendo. Und wir haben den Film aus Anlass, dass er eben hier ist, auch nochmal ins Programm aufgenommen. Er wird morgen Abend hier im Kino laufen. Ähm, den Film, den wir heute Abend ähm, sehen, Le Masque de Sun, ist ähm, ein Spielfilm. Ähm, sonst hat er eher dokumentarische Filme gedreht. Das ist sein erster Spielfilm, der leider auch nicht in die Kinos gekommen ist, sondern nur auf Festivals gelaufen ist äh, ähm, und eher im Fernsehen lief. Um, this is true, that it hasn't been um, in distribution, the film. Um, ich habe nicht alles verstanden. Ah, okay, I'll tell you later. <lacht> okay, <lacht> gut. Um, ja, gut, viel mehr will ich jetzt auch vielleicht gar nicht vorweg sagen. Wir haben den Film auch nochmal ins Programm genommen. Wir sind aufgrund sozusagen der Diskussion um die um, genau, Rückgabe von afrikanischen Kulturgütern, um, was jetzt gerade in Frankreich sehr stark besprochen wird. Um, das war so ein bisschen der indirekte Anlass, aber der Film ist natürlich auch ein sehr interessanter Film und hat uns gut gefallen und wir werden im Anschluss eine Diskussion machen und wie Sie schon gemerkt haben, wir werden die Diskussion, ich hoffe, das ist okay, wenn nicht, kann ich auch ein bisschen übersetzen, auf Englisch machen. Ich hoffe, die, die meisten von Ihnen verstehen Englisch, wie gesagt, ich kann auch gerne dann auch ähm, etwas übersetzen. Um, okay, I just um, talked a little bit about um, your two documentaries and yes. yes. <lacht> No, uh, the, the only thing I can say about the film is uh, I am not an African, as you noticed. Uh, but uh, the film has been written and the script has been made uh, through all the discussions I have with Mayan people during years and years. So there is not one sentence in the film which comes from Europe. It's all, everything is Mayan. It's all interviews we have been we have made with my scriptwriter during years and years, and we've made a mix of that, and we wrote the script of the film with you, you're going to see. Gut, dann bis nachher. Viel Spaß mit dem Film. So, bis später. So I would start, I think, with the first question. Um, what was your starting point um, to do this film? Um, Did you already know a lot about this history or the story of the, the masks or um, did you learn about it in the process? And um, okay, maybe first this and then yeah, next one. Um, Nochmal, ist es okay, dass ich auf Englisch die Diskussion mache? Ist okay. Yeah. As you like. Um, so it's a, oh, it's a sim very simple story. Yusuf Tatasise was a friend of mine. Uh, since a long time, because he made the subtitles, the translation for the subtitles of my first mm -hmm. film. And uh, in 2010, I met him again because uh, I was looking for him. I was thinking he was in, um, in Mali, but I came to his home in Paris and uh, we discussed and he was writing a book about the Shirara mask. And uh, when I left him, he just told me, hey, Jacques, when do we do this film about mask? And so, okay, it's, it's, it's an easy sentence, but making a film about mask is quite complicated. So I was thinking about the documentary film first, and uh, little by little, this, we met, we discussed, with, we spent years, uh, no, months and months with him, discussing, we traveled with him, with my script writer. We traveled in Mali, and uh, the script became what it is now. Because if you see the scenes, a lot of time you have you're thinking that it is documentary because um, I guess most of the persons are um, real and they're doing the job they're doing in the film, or um, 
Yes. No, it's not because they're doing the job. They are they're in the uh, in the film. It's not because they play their own roles that it's a documentary. No, no, no. But but I mean, the situations are real. I mean, the people, the the. the ah yes, um, the situations are mm -hmm. real. Yes, yes, of course, yes. Are there already some <laughs> questions from the audience? Or, um, um, when you um, when you did the film, um, the um, this issue of um, giving back um, the masks um, was it already that um, that big as it is now? Um, has uh, has this discussion already started? Um, because you, you have this scene, of course, um, in the Cinematheque, which I think it's a very, very special um, scene and a very important scene for the film, where they're talking about um, the history and um, that it has to come back to, to the country. But um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big story because mm -hmm. uh, those masks, uh, all the masks and that's all, ha, which are in the museums in Europe or in the US should be in their own country. But the problem is that they can't stay in their own country because as soon as they come back, if they are going to, if they are, they are going to museums, you have some ministers who comes and take them to uh, when they're traveling outside to uh, to give some presents to their the other ministers or the guys who work in the museum who who earn maybe fifty dollars a month they can say they sell them for uh, to feed their family so it's quite complicated it's a big story it should be better there but it's I, I think the conditions are not good now to to return in their country but they could go they could travel we could organize some exhibition which travels in those countries it should be a first step interesting to uh, to for, for for the countries where the masks were made does the younger generation does the younger generation respect the masks no i have to say that uh, with the islamization now more and more the country uh, becomes more islamized because qatar and uh, saudi arabia they invest a lot in the quranic schools in mosques and things like in mosques and things like that so less and less the mask and all the traditional dances and music they begin to disappear so the the young people now they don't uh, they don't care a lot about this type of culture it's a shame it's their culture but it can change maybe What do you think about the proposition of Macron? It's the, the proposition of Macron is just uh, is returning the mask to Africa. But uh, it's just as I was talking about. For me, it's, uh, regarding this proposal, I think it's, uh, it's electoral. It's uh, just a question for election. It's just a, a question of sending 26 masks back to Benin to his friend who is now president of Benin and I don't think they will send a lot of masks to you to Africa uh, in those next months so uh, as I told you I think it's a good idea to send those masks there but they will never stay as soon as there is a uh, coup d'etat how do you tell that in English a coup d'etat when there is a revolution change of government all the museums they are completely uh, uh, empty they become empty uh, everything is stolen so it's, if it's now in public um, um, museums in Europe it will be in private museum in private hands afterwards uh, when they will come back because they will not stay long in Africa I think Um, what do the people in Africa and Mali think about this? Because, yes, as you just asked, um, look, the younger generation um, doesn't know about this tradition anymore, doesn't have to do so much with this tradition. How is it with the older people? Um, what, do, what is their um, relationship to, to, to this um, tradition? 
It depends where. If you are in Bamako, in the city, they don't care a lot about these traditional dances and songs and things like that. But if you are in the villages, it's more respected. Uh, that it's much more traditional. The villages, for example, the villages, the village. We rented the whole village to organize a ceremony. And we went there with uh, Yusuf Tata Sisi and we asked them to, to re re rebuild a, um, a dance and songs like it was in the years 50. So they made it, but they, they, were, they were almost m still practicing this type of ceremonies now, so it was not complicated for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The story you tell in your film, who likes the film and who criticized the film, for what reasons? Who likes? I don't know. In, in, the, in the theater here, you can, we can ask people to raise hands. <laughs> um, this film has been... Uh, a it's not a very lucky film, so it has been released in Switzerland, but very badly released in theaters because the producer wanted to get his money immediately, so the, the release was very well, very bad made. In France, they don't want to hear about Mali. Uh, they're not interested because, uh, because it's like that. It's a story uh, for relationship. And I made, for example, another documentary afterwards about Islamization of the country and, uh, and um, the, the France, French government paid for the film, but they never broadcast, broadcasted it. It was censured. So in France, I cannot say, it had been screened one or twice and, uh, and um, it has been sold in, in, in New Zealand, in the US, in Canada, but I don't have the reaction of the people. I just know the, what saw the people who bought it. So I, I, I really don't know. I haven't made a lot of uh, uh, debates like that, and I haven't presented the film very often. I showed it in Mali, yes, of course, of course, twice. We, 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 I, we shown it uh, in Bamako, and uh, the people liked it a lot, I have to say. And they were asking themselves, why don't we make those films on our culture ourselves? Why is it a white man making this film? Uh, we should do that ourselves. And the second time, we screened it in the village where the dance was. Because for me, it's a, just an obligation to, to go there and to go back and to show to the people why and what they have done. So, but I just sent the team I, uh, I worked with because I could not go myself because it was too dangerous. Because the jihadists were coming down and down in the area where we filmed. So two years after, we had to stop and 200 kilometers from the village. It's a shame I never went back. But I have heard that they were, because we, we screened two things. We screened the film, okay, they like the film, okay. Ah, it's you, it's you. But they were totally crazy when uh, we, we screened just the ceremony we filmed. So, uh, the, because it was there, they, 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 they were seeing themselves playing. And they had a very big screen and uh, a video projector on the place of the village and they were, 2,000 people, I think, shouting and <laughs> for all the night, so they liked it. I suppose they liked it. <coughs> uh, for me, one of the most important scenes was the scene where... T Can you hear me? Yeah. The old man uh, talks about democracy. doesn't function in, in uh, tell something about your thoughts about this scene oh it's just uh, how do you say that uh, clack clack a pied de nez 
I, I wanted to to make in the film. Of course, they don't have nothing to uh, to. They're not interested in this type in this type of government because they they were they, they function with ethnic groups. So everybody will vote will vote for his ethnic group. So democracy has a totally different signification there. So the president, for example, I screened the film once in Paris, and the the the, the guy who came second at the presidential election uh, some months before he was at the screening, when all the Malian people who were at the at the screening, they, they saw it at the end of the film. But okay, it's like, oh, he is a Cisse, oh, he doesn't worth nothing. And uh, they were looking at him like that. So it's a different relationship with uh, democracy. And uh, of course, Mamadou, who talks about that, is not a Democrat. He's a, he is a dictator. <laughs> um. The language is Bambara, and do you speak it? No, <laughs> I don't speak one word Bambara. For me, it was totally impossible to make this film in French, because if you if for if you want if you want to receive that's one of the reasons this film is unlucky. Because first of all, I am not Af African, so it's quite complicated because you, I'm a white man making a film about Africa. So first of all, so the people in in Western countries they don't understand. And secondly, to have to receive finance uh, from the French government, for example, we, you need to have 51% of the words in French. If not, you have to be an African director. So I was not, so it's cool. secondly, second thing. Uh, but I didn't want to make a film in French. For me, it's totally stupid to ask those people to speak French when they, they, they speak about their own problems. So I don't speak Bambara, no. The script was in French, and I had an interpreter uh, on my side. And he was uh, reading the script in French, he was following the discussion in Bambara, and after the, the scene, he was telling me if it was okay or not. <laughs> because I have to say that Mamadou, the old, ma old man, he was uh, always thinking about uh, saying something more. <laughs> yeah, I have my idea, I'm going to make something more. And sometimes some scenes, they were lasting 10 minutes, I had to, st to stop it and <laughs> begin again because he wanted to say everything he has to say. <laughs> it was fun. But we were, because we had three professional actors in the film, Bakari, the girl, and the other old man, uh, Salif. They were the only. The other one, they were people living in their village and they were playing their own role. So we had Bakari, who was also, uh, he's working at the Comédie Française in Paris. So he speaks also Bambara because it's his country and he speaks French. So he could, on one way, direct the, uh, the other actor. On when they were walking, so he was always like that and uh, turning himself and pushing and sin. But it, he's doing it quite well because you don't notice. And on one way, he was helping the others to say their text. So it it was all an, uh, an alchemy, interesting. <laughs> because it's quite difficult if you're not an actor, even if you have one sheet and you have to just to answer and move at the same time and don't look at the camera and don't look at the sound and speak right, have the, have the, have the right tone in your voice. And it, it looks quite simple, but it's quite complicated when you have a big camera like that just in front of your eyes. But they were okay, I think. Some are a little bit rigid. You see, they, are, they have some tension. The young man, for example, some young, but uh, it's a choice I made. <coughs> Can you st say something about the music? The music, I wanted to ask Salif Keita to make the music. That was my first idea. And it was so complicated to reach him and to ask him to work that uh, he, he asked, he answered yes when the film was finished already, so it was... <laughs> but the guy I found, uh, he, made the f he made the music after on the image, 
uh, on the flute and everything, and I am happy. It's a Malian guy, and he, he's great. I think the voice corresponds to what I wanted. So. It's also a small budget film, uh, what was 700, 600,000 euros. We were 35 uh, people during uh, six weeks in Mali, and uh, so it's not a huge budget film. Another question, what about the film? Archive we could see in the film. Sorry? Oh, the film archive, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what was it? What? There is no film archive. The blue, the blue images. <laughs> he visits a friend of his father in in, in Bamako, and he's in in, in this um, huge ah, film in archive. the laboratory. In laboratory. Yes. Okay. Ah, where they were keeping the films. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, I did. It, 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 it's just like that. It's uh, they, they, they are keeping the all uh, archives of their of all uh, Malian story in this uh, terrible uh, room with a uh, refrigerator and a climatizer, which is maybe the oldest you can imagine. And uh, but. It's like that, and the, the uh, Yugoslavia they have uh, because uh, uh, um, in the years '60 the cinematographers came from Yugoslavia and they, they proposed the Malian government to repurchase all their archives, but then they didn't have the money and they can't hold it in a good condition. So, so it's still in Yugoslavia. I think I don't know. It's a cemetery of films, also not only cemetery yes. <laughs> for the mask. <laughs> yes. Of course, yes, yes. <laughs> you said that uh, the people will not keep the objects; they will sell it. They will take. It take it, and, and so on. Uh, have you been in the museum of Bamako? Yes, of course. And there, this, uh, it's a beautiful museum. The museum is quite nice. The, the Mamadou is, uh, uh, he sells uh, art, masks, and things like that in his real life. So I know mm -hmm. how they do the authorizations to to um, to export the mask, you don't. You just take a photo of a piece which is quite similar. You go with a photo to the museum. You pay fifty euros. You have your stamp, and you can get out. It's just like that. And Samuel Sidibe, the I think the the man who was the, the director or manager of the museum during years. I think he, he, he collaborated and uh, he, he sold also some pieces or, or closed his eyes when they were leaving the country. Hmm. If the ministers are coming and they say, I take this one because you have to go to France and I, have, I need a present, what, what are you going to do? Because the minister is paying you, so you just... <laughs> you, <laughs> you have been there? Yes, yes. Yes, the museum is nice, huh? but uh, all the pieces are quite are, 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 don't have any interest, I think. You think so? From what I have seen, yes. No, I ask me if uh, what you say. They have some earth. Uh, it's not cooked a little earth interesting. Yes. Is it not a little respectless if you say that uh, probably all the the object, the main objects will, will go back to Africa, they will be sold, they will be stolen, they will be... Uh, you don't think that that can change a little? <laughs> but it, it's... Uh, it, um, I think it goes with, uh, with the development of the countries. When the people will, will not starve anymore, they will keep uh, them. You can, they will keep the museums and, and they will keep their objects. 
uh, when somebody is angry, I think you just you just can organize what you want, but it's just impossible. Uh, it's not a question of respect. I uh, I totally support the 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 idea of bringing back their culture in those countries, but uh, I don't think it's uh, it's feasible today. Because you never know, maybe tomorrow uh, you have a, an Islamic government in Mali and uh, it's, it's well possible. And uh, what I'm going to do with all those objects? They will burn it. Okay. It's a risk. It's their object. So after it's a decision, uh, yes, okay, we, they burn it, they burn it. And we can keep some copies. In any case, we, half of the objects we have in our museums, there are copies already. So we can have 100% of copies and send the real object back there. I don't mind, I just... Uh, there is a sentence I like to, to repeat. Uh, it's, if you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you are going. It's in the film and I think it's the base of, of a culture because it's very useful for... for I, I, I will give this film to the Malian TV, I will offer them because I think it's important for them, important for them. But uh, afterwards, uh, it's complicated uh, to, to, <laughs> to send all those objects back without a, a risk. It's, the, the risk is that they, come, they, they get out from public museum and they come back in private collection or they go in Qatar or in Saudi Arabia in the other museum. In, I don't know why not, but okay. We could organize trips, uh, uh, itinerant exhibitions. That should be maybe a good idea to begin with, but okay. It's also like, a, like in Bamako, for example, you have an ex uh, you have a um, Bamako photographic photographic uh, exhibition every year or every two years since uh, twenty or twenty five years. But who is going to visit those exhibitions? Only the Western journalists coming to Bamako. You never see a Malian guy uh, in those uh, the rooms, in those uh, museums, seeing the photos. Uh, but I was surprised, I have to see, in Dakar, uh, eight, nine months ago, there was a Biennale of Dakar for uh, contemporary art, and there were quite a lot of uh, Senegalese people visiting the exhibitions. That was very interesting. But Senegal is more stable than Mali for now. <coughs> Maybe I have. After the question, um, so um, if he goes with his mask to this mask seems to be very very special and you, for us the masks almost look a little bit alike. But um, there it seems to have a very big tradition in which masks come from which um, area and there seems to be also more important masks and maybe not so good quality masks. Or maybe you can say did you get more into this um, where the masks come from? Can like he in the film he tries to find out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just uh, thinking about <laughs> um, who made this mask. Is it really possible to to find out which master made this special mask? So, so some masks uh, are made by some people, but it's very rare. Mm -hmm. I think in in uh, the Yoruba ethnic, you have some some sculptures which mm -hmm. were very well known. And we know it's from this village made by this mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. But usually you never know who made the f mask. It's totally anonymous. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so um, thank you for coming. I mean, we will oh, be still me. outside. Thank you for and coming. There. You came. <laughs> I came too. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>